hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Dr. Judy here, Dr. Judy WTF, and I am delighted to be here tonight. We have a, a very relevant topic, relevant to many, many people who seek treatment. And the question I'm posing to everyone is why do children and many adults think it's all my fault? So we're going to mind map this. And also, this is a call-in show, so please, everyone, do call in. That call-in number is 323-524-2599. That's 323-524-2599. <clears throat> I welcome all call-ins. And the only uh, suggestion is please keep it relatively short and relevant to the topic. So uh, if you look at my mind map, with which most people who watch the show are familiar with, but if you are a newcomer, then first off, you can receive a free PDF of my book, Be the Cause Healing Human Disconnect, so you can get caught up on the mind map system for healing, which I will give you a brief um, uh, synopsis of. So if you look at the mind map, you will see that it is divided into nine panels. And the top three panels represent the past. The middle represents the crazy chaos and breakdowns of today. And the last three panels represent the paradigm shift out of all of the childhood wounds and into, uh, into healing and finally peace and unity. So why is it that children blame themselves? I want to start out by referring to Dr. Alice Miller, who wrote a very, very famous book titled Drama of the Gifted Child. And she puts it this way. She says that a child would rather be a bad child in a good world than a good child in a bad world. Now, let's Try to look at that and understand what that all means. First of all, I'm going to repeat it because it's, it's a kind of a hard concept to grasp if you haven't heard it before. So the child would rather be the good one in a bad world, meaning in the family, than the bad one in a good world. So let me sum up several reasons why that's so. First of all, childhood is a hostage situation. You do not choose your parents. You don't choose your environment. So that if the family is not doing too well, if you are being um, uh, mistreated in, 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 on several levels, usually several levels, what happens is that um, you, you have to somehow in your mind justify why you're being mistreated. And the only way to justify it, if you want to make uh, a, a sense of it from a point of view of, of safety, is that it's all my fault. Why safety? Because imagine if it were the other way around. Imagine if it was all their fault. If it's all your parents' fault, then that's just horrible because now you're in a a tyrannical hostage situation, and you have no control of that. And I think we have a call in. So, hello, you are on the couch with Dr. Judy. Hi. Hey, Dr. Judy. It's Robert. How are you? Oh, hi, Robert. How are you doing? I'm um, I'm doing great. I'm um, actually when I seen this topic, it was literally a chapter from my past as the younger Robert versus the adult one who I am now after the revelations of my map and, and all of this. So I want to, um, first of all, give you an example of something that was happened when I was younger. Okay. That how I thought, yeah. Okay. How I and, thought, and just uh, relate it. I'm just, uh, I'm just asking you to relate it back to what, what this topic is all about is that seeing yourself from the eyes of it's all your fault. So, um, right. Yeah. That's what it is going to be. Okay. Um, when I was at, at a school, uh, this was freshman year, uh, the bullying was so severe and um, I really couldn't protect myself. And um, all, the teachers I knew 
had nothing to do with protecting me, even though it was there. So I did feel like that was my fault. Mm-hmm. But both of my parents were negligent in that. So when I had to go back to school the following year as a freshman, I was still 14, I started, the bullying started to happen again. So I, I went to my dad and I said, Dad, something has to be done. I'm, I'm, I'm getting bullied. It's really bad. And he just said, oh, please, I don't have time for that. And my oh. mother goes, Bob, you need to, please, you you need to handle yourself. My sister Natalie is in the background laughing. So here I'm thinking it's my fault. And then I actually remember busted out crying. And I said, please, I just don't want to go back. Mm -hmm. And my Mm -hmm. dad angrily um, grabbed, made an obscene gesture to me that I, something I should have done. And, And I remember thinking how disgusting it was. And then he put me, he like gave me a, a switchblade, a stiletto, which I didn't know was illegal. He said, oh, take this with you. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my God. So, but wow. the next, yeah. So now he's now putting you in an illegal, illegal situation, too. Putting weapons in your right. hands. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I did feel like the bullying was all my fault through words and deeds, even with other things. Now... Here's where, as the older one, and we could see how it is a lot of manipulation, and it's evil because it's all about them. And it's just pretty, just nasty and dirty. When we had the restaurant, towards the end, um, my sister was there, Natalie, who was the golden child, and Mm -hmm. she could do no wrong. Mm -hmm. And I was going in and I was setting up. It was early in the morning. She came in about an hour or no, actually it was about 20 minutes. So it was fairly recent. She woke up on the wrong side of the coffin that day. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, um, I, um, I can't even imagine, um, what what triggered the argument? I knew she was in a bad mood, so I kind of kept my distance. But something happened that was so mediocre, but she had this rage in her. And I knew I was like, oh, and, and I said, you need to really calm down. This is this is so, ridiculous. So let, let, let's, and, let's go back to the point of you're being the bad one. And now you're talking about your sister, correct? Who was the golden no, child? I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how when I went to defend myself, against her attacking me my dad goes oh bob do you see what you're doing my my afib is 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 reacting natalie quick go get my blood pressure machine and then she looked at me smiled yeah she looked at me with this dark smile and said you see what you're doing he said you need to go okay so let's let's just take a moment and, and recap what you're saying here okay because i want the audience to connect the dots that number one it was all about your parents wasn't it robert it was all about them that you're yes. making them sick yes. and then uh back to the other point of putting a switchblade in your hands so now you're going to get in trouble with That's the law uh, st- okay so you now you're going to become a juvenile delinquent if you uh if you fight back and so what what okay i just want to mind map it so that we really get to the uh the heart of the matter why do why did you and i know first of all i want to acknowledge the hard work that you have done with the mind map and the therapy and uh, i think you've been one of the most hard-working people uh working the system and clearly uh there's a huge difference uh between who you were being and, and and who you are today and so i know you're very very excited about sharing who you you know who you morphed into and so let's track this thing uh i want to refer to childhood wounds which you've had many of and the ones that you brought up is that you were emotionally abandoned and you were blamed and shamed by your family and so these wounds are going to end up in panel number three i'm just kind of shortcutting my way over to panel right, three the encoding. 
the encoding. So, Bob, uh, Robert, look what, what's been encoding in you, encoded in you. So your parents are supposed to be your pillars. Your parents are supposed to be your protectors. Those two little strands of the DNA are supposed to be, let's say, mom and dad. And then the, the little people on the ladder are supposed to be the siblings that are um, protected and growing and and manifesting the best of their best. But in your case, that's not the case. That's not the case. So what do you have to do? You have to people please. You have to shut your voice down. Because why? Bottom line is the children cannot let uh, let go of the bond between themselves and the parents. It is absolutely, in a child's world, unsafe and they will do anything to keep that bond, including um, deny the reality of the truth of what was, which is, you could tell me now, the truth is. Is that they're basically evil. I mean, they knew better. They just didn't have the time. And I do remember um, as a 14 and then I was 15 years old, I had a fr I froze. I didn't run away. I it wasn't a fight or flight. It was it was a freeze. Like I just felt like my whole body would just cringe and I would almost turn into a statue because yeah. I didn't have a voice. Well, well and this there is... was no one to even hear my voice. Well, this is what I refer to as the double dungeon of darkness, because you couldn't turn to your mother, you couldn't turn to your father, you couldn't turn to yourself, you couldn't turn to the school for safety, they weren't going to protect sibling, you, couldn't. couldn't turn to your own siblings, and so you were checkmated, and that's the freeze that you were feeling. You, you see where the freeze comes from? And so, yes. so they put you in a predicament and they kept slamming you with, it's all your fault. They kept slamming you with, get the, uh, the heart monitor. Oh my God, you're giving me a heart attack. Oh, go in there. So what, so what do you this think? Six so years later, that, that, that was about, that was when I realized how sick they were. But then my dad would say, if you leave this restaurant, you, I'm effed. He's at, he's, I'd be screwing him over. It would be, he, he won't have the help. He can't get the help. So if you leave, it, it's all my fault if I would try to break away from that restaurant. And mm -hmm. then when, it be, when I would defend myself against my sister's rage, because one of her girlfriends took off, the one who was buying the restaurant, I, I was just defending myself when she was acting like a monster. And I think that's what... So why are you act, you're acting like such a monster, my so, God? So let, let me ask you this. He, let me ask you there. this, Robert. Yeah. Um, um, I know there's a lot of pain around it, and we've spoken so much about uh, fraud and family fraud and Ponzi schemes and all that. And yes, I'll probably do another show on it. And, you know, by all means, right. we'll, we'll, we'll delve into that. Right now, what I want to focus on is that... The, the, uh, on some level, you bought into the fact that if if you leave the re look at the power they had over you. If you leave that well, restaurant, the restaurant is going to go belly up. I, I do have to disagree. I okay. do have to disagree because I knew how sick he was, but at the same time, I felt trapped. I, he felt like this dark cloud, and I also used the analogy bear claw. And that's because that's the sharpest, most biggest thing that could snap. And it felt like he wouldn't even let me. So I did feel like I was trapped. I knew that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, how manipulative he was, but I did feel trapped. So, so, so that's what you're saying is you knew yeah. you knew it. You were aware of it. It's not like you, at, you were at sleeping. Last year, yeah, that was mm -hmm. two years ago. At 14, yeah. I did feel it was my fault that I was bullied. And so that panel three, which led to um, four, five, six later on in life over and over. But yeah, a couple of years ago, I didn't know how sick it was, but I felt kind of a, just like I had to defend constantly defend defend survive and it was uh that that was the darkness that was encoding my soul and so, then so when i broke away and searched for answers and as m scott peck said th th these are all lies and they and lies are evil and the mm -hmm. book people of the lie 
about narcissism. I love this that is book. Narcissism. Yeah. Le- me too. That book l- led me to you, which led me to the mind map, which led me here right now. So it's all, you know, th- okay, there, so, th- there is a synergy. So, 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 yeah. so let's go back for a moment to panel number three so people can really understand that this hostage situation where you felt trapped, you felt like you were the bad one, and they kept saying to you something like, I'm imagining that the communication was, you're a really weak person. Now go back in there, okay? Go. Well, what do, what do parents who really have empathy and care for their children do? They go to the principal, they go into the school system, and they say, look, my son's being bullied. This is unacceptable. Uh, you, you guys need to have a better better plan in place for uh, your students so that the, the children are, are safe going to school. And by the way, this is something that I really, really want to have happen this year is to get the mind map system into the school system because unless we, um, we intercept the negative core beliefs of children who are buying into these horrible lies, as M. Scott Peck talks about and as we talk about, they're going to be thinking mm-hmm. that they're not good enough and that they're not lovable and that they're weak and they're losers. And I'm just curious what you, you encoded in your panel three. What did that look like for you? Um, well, I, I'm going to say that you uh, about the narcissism that you, you can't confront them with evidence they'll del- deny it. And the evidence was there because it was so bad. I was failing almost every class. So w- what I encoded was was that I was worthy to be bullied. Uh-huh. I was worthy to to be hurt because yes. I I was worthless. I didn't. I wasn't worthy of love. I wasn't worthy of thinking the world was safe. I thought the world were full of monsters and people that just wanted to hurt me, that the world was unsafe. And I became a, I, you know, unlovable, ugly, uh, stupid. I knew right. I wasn't stupid. I knew what was making me not be able to learn. So I, I so, want to, but I, 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 I did feel you ugly, stupid. I, I want to read a quote by Sandra Lee Dennis, and uh, it, it pertains to what you're talking about and the subject, which is that trauma victims commonly blame themselves. Blaming oneself for the shame of being a victim is recognized by trauma specialists as a defense against the extreme powerlessness we feel in the wake of a traumatic event. So again, we're going to be the bad guys and let the parents be the the good guys. Self-blame continues the illusion of control, shock destroys, but prevents us from the necessary working through of the traumatic feelings and memories to heal and recover. So really what Sandra's talking about is that complex PTSD that works itself into the fiber of our being and it's unconscious, it gets stuck there. And uh, it, uh, until we process the feelings behind it, which I know you have because you've been very yeah. diligent about it. So maybe talk a little bit about um, the robber today. And and so l- let's just play a, a, a little game here. Now imagine if Robert okay. today, okay, Robert today had a, a father who said, you know, you go in there with this knife and, you know, get your act together. You're giving me a heart attack and you get back in there and uh, and, and, and stand up and, and, and you're, you know, all the messages that you've just told me that you in incorporated what do you think the robert of today would be thinking doing saying i am not taking a knife i am not going in there to put myself in harm's risk i just won't go to school until you transfer me to another one which is a lot safer for my well-being you're not going to put me in harm's way anymore dad and by giving me a knife not only proves you, you don't care about me ending up in jail. You, you're just sick in the head. And, mm. and the proof is in the pudding. I'm failing every subject. I can't comprehend. I, I'm, I'm always thinking I'm going to get hurt physically and as well as mentally. It was just, yeah, yeah, I would be hiding out in, in the bathroom as a 14-year-old. So, so, so this that, is, 
that parent would turn that around on you and say, no, you're failing because you're stupid, Robert. It's not yes, our fault. That's exactly what he said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, what's this? You can't learn? It, it, no, I'm being bullied. Oh, well, get over it. It was, yeah, and, uh, get over it. This is, you're not a parent. Okay, I mean, so parents so, don't speak to their children like that. No, they do not. That's not parenting. That's bullying. They're bullying you. So no wonder you've been mm-hmm. primed to be bullied. And the other point I wanted to make about that is that um, that although everything you said sounds like high self-esteem, like, oh, no, I'm not going in there. I'm not going to do that to myself. You get me a school where I feel safe or you do something to make me feel safe. Now, that's all well and good. The problem is, is that when you're a child, and you're in that hostage situation, then your wishes are not their commands. You understand? And so right, you have right. to somehow, if you could survive this, and you, uh, you, you wake up to the fact that there's something wrong with them, then you're a, 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 in, a, in a lot better shape if you wake up to that. But there's not still much that you can do. It's just that when you're out of the system... And that's why it's really, really hard with children because they're still in the system. We at the Psychological Healing Center, we can we can psychoeducate them and heal them. But if they're going back into the system of demean, deme- devalue, and destroy, then we're best off working with the parents. We're best off working with the families if we can. So even though you woke up and you knew better, the truth is, is that it was only after you were out of the system correct that you could truly do some some major healing on yourself when the the his business closed and then i realized how corrupt he was through uh, through just cutting myself off and then just observing and doing research mostly through the education of the book the people of the lie and then watching your podcast about sibling rivalry why okay. there was hatred why, and then and then the manipulation and everything you said about the narcissistic mother but the point was, the point is is that you were not a child any longer see you were able to right. pull out and i want the audience to understand that when you're a child you want to hang on to that bond so badly your mother your father is your god your mother and your father they are your source they're your source of of everything even if it's not good they're still your source so you don't want to disrupt the bond and that is the main reason why alice miller uh talks about um being the the bad child in the good world well, it's like the Wizard of Oz. I mean, the wizard's telling them to go fight the witch, and, mm-hmm. and, and the witch could uh, kill them. Correct. But uh, just do it to get the broom, and then you unmask it, and then you realize that it's a fraud. It's exactly. all lies. Exactly. Exactly. So you have uh, spent a lot of time. I know we have another caller, so I'm going to take the other caller. Oh, okay. uh, but you've un- unmasked it, and because of your work, you're not in a hostage situation. So, Robert, well, thank you always thanks. for calling in, and I know we will be in touch. Oh, thank and, you, Dr. And Judy. And also and, for and being you so truly supportive. Are, keep up with these shows. They are so strengthening for just, you know, everybody and thank you thank you i'm gonna take that other caller because i don't want them to disappear and 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 thank you so much robert always for calling in and sharing of yourself appreciate it okay um you are on the couch with dr judy and what is your name please my name is brooke i'm from washington hi brooke how are you doing I'm pretty good, thank you. I called in once before, and uh, it's another good topic. Um, obviously, I think children think they're at fault for the narcissist's lack of taking responsibility for anything and being told repetitively that it is our fault. That's right, right. And then we incorporate but, that, yes? Well, I was just going to add, too, it comes on, on my level, it comes back to adoption, Mm -hmm. and uh, having an older sibling that was adopted and always being compared to that sibling, even from the get-go, as as he was an easy baby and he was just so delightful. And then I come along and I cry Mm -hmm. and I'm just Mm -hmm. disruptive and I can't Mm -hmm. do anything right. And, you know, from that point on. And then it's just, even as I'm growing older, it's like, 
you know, my mom would say horrendous things like, I should have listened to God when he said I couldn't have kids. Oh, like, whoa. what am I supposed to do with that? Wow. I mean, I'm a kid. Wow, wow. I'm a child going, That's, wow, yeah. what, what am I supposed to, how do I hold so, on to that? So you were adopted, correct? Correct, three okay. months. Okay, and so, three months. Okay, so not only do you have a disruption of mother-infant connection because you know the whole mind map is predicated on human disconnect and wherever we're disconnected from is where we hurt so you were disconnected from your biological mother and your father and that family and then you landed in this family and look at the welcome sign you get this is beyond horrendous to say something like that to a child as you all know and so what are you supposed to encode about all of this and so what do you think you did what do you think your panel three belief system about yourself and the world became uh probably many things i i as far as the most prominent probably that i they didn't want me around okay okay so now question let's go to panel number four for a moment and look at that panel and that panel represents chaos and if you are being encoded with messages like should have listened to God, shouldn't have had any children, encoding you with you're not wanted, you're not lovable, then what do you, what did you pick in your life that may have been your WTF, your WTF, what the Freud repetition principle? What kinds of patterns do you see that you repeated around that theme of not wanted, not lovable, it's all your fault, uh, you, sh you shouldn't have even been here. And so if you don't mind looking into that area of your life and seeing what you picked as a result of the, um, the childhood wounds and the encodings. Well, I fought it pretty hard. I was kind of rebellious. I didn't I, I wasn't one to just jump on the train, even though it was hurtful and painful. Mm -hmm. uh, I, like I said, I mean, I didn't. There's always something in me that believed otherwise, but at the same time, you know, when it's your parents and you're under five, and they're telling you these horrendous things of how difficult you are and how much you buck the system and ask too many questions and mm -hmm. you, whatever mm -hmm. it was, it doesn't even really matter at this point, other than trying to, to get out of that mindset took me 50 years okay. of, you know, trying to get away from, you know what, I don't believe you anymore. I don't believe that I'm a bad person and that, you know, you chose to have a child from, I didn't chose to get born. Exactly. And so, so that's <laughs> you logic. Know, so how can I be at fault? Exactly, but that, that's logic. So as I like to say, there's logic, and then there's psychologic with the emphasis on psycho, which makes us crazy. So the, 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 the aspect of why children think it's all their fault is because of the need to control their bond and their need to control love. And if they behave nicely, they have a better chance of being loved and if they in their mind okay it doesn't work that way but in a child's world i'll be good mommy i agree mommy yes i'm bad mommy and so now i'll comply with you i'll shut down my voice in the hopes that they're now going to appease their mother or father please their mother or father and then it'll turn full circle and somehow they'll get the love that they have been craving all along. Um, so I want to know what, what kind of relationships you ended up choosing as a result of negative core beliefs like I'm not wanted, I'm not lovable, I shouldn't have even been, been born. What kind, of, what, what kind of chaos did you find yourself in? I think I spent the entirety of my life isolating myself and not trusting most people just for the okay. pure, mere fact that um, I was like you said, I was programmed to believe that I didn't have much value not much value so there's that core that you don't have much value and it sounds like you you try to avoid the chaos correct 
by, by becoming an isolationism. If you look at panel number five, that re represents our, um, our defense mechanisms. So isolation is a defense mechanism. So you, you, you try to choose as wi wisely as possible. Um, the problem with defense mechanisms is that they, 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 they work in the situation that we're in. However, they also lock us in psychological prison when they're no longer appropriate to the situation. Okay, do you see how that could work? So you're out in the world and it's not necessarily so that everyone is gonna demean, devalue, destroy you and kick you to the curb, but yet you, you, you've lost trust in the world. So you're not gonna take that chance. So as a result, you just shut down. And then what's that going to bring you? Uh, it doesn't bring a lot. doesn't bring a lot, <laughs> right? Right. No, no, nobody's knocking on my door. Right. And so, so, so do you see how these, um, these, these defense mechanisms that work to, you know, we're trying to do all kinds of things, keep the bond, keep the control, defend against the hurt. All of these things are going on. And at the end of the day, we don't get to play in panel number seven, which is synergy. We don't get to have synergistic relationships. Why? Because we don't trust and believe that they even exist. Because as I say over and over again in my book, my video, and in my therapy sessions, parents set the bar. And when parents set the bar, then the children think that everybody's like that. So why would you want to take a chance at love or friendship or trust or anything like that when they've already uh, defined the world to be, as you've described it, untrusting and unwelcoming and unloving and, and so on and so forth. So, judgmental. Judgmental. So, so Brooke, why should you, right? Why, what, what, what's panel seven to you? It's just a, an airy fairy fantasy. It's not something uh, that you practically uh, 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 experienced. Right. Yeah, very little. Very little. And so how, how are you today? Who's in your world that perhaps you've opened up to a little more or started trusting a little more or let in a little bit more? Who, who in your world have you attempted to do that with? Uh, well, I have a good therapist. After that, I, well, I lost my cat a couple of years ago. It would be my therapist and my cat, but yeah. it's just my therapist now. Okay. Okay. So you, you've begun, but, you trust your therapist. Yes. Although she's retiring and, uh, that's got me kind of thrown in a, a little loop okay. since I've been seeing her for eight years. Yeah. That's and, uh, quite a relationship. <laughs> right. So, um, so just some, some ideas for you, if you don't, mind okay so absolutely okay so have you read much or any of the book be the cause healing human disconnect well you know what i've written down the the title and uh we have one bookstore where i live and uh they don't have it uh, I'll mail, I'll, you can you can order the hard copy online at through through amazon and then you can leaf through it, and all of you can have a free PDF copy of this book. You're all welcome to it. And so, well, I, I'm aware of those things, although I can't get the PDF copy because I don't have enough room on my tablet gotcha. of my internet thing. Gotcha. And then, okay. uh, I'm not much of an internet person at all, so ordering it on Amazon is not really like I don't know. I cry thinking about it. Okay, okay. As far as technico technology kind of frustrates me, but, you know, the fact that I did go to the bookstore and they don't have it, I guess, you know, I was a little razzled that day. I could have had them order it for me, and I probably will eventually. Okay, um, okay. I'm still kind of in an isolation place where I have a hard time going grocery shopping. Okay, well, this all comes from those childhood wounds and the messaging. And so um, I, I just want to suggest to you, now that your, your therapist has told you that she's retiring, perhaps she can help you to transition to other safe haven places. Like uh, maybe group therapy might be your next best place to go 
where there are other people who are um, dealing with um, ne needing more support, and there are other people who are working through their issues, and then to start to trust on the basis of um, your, you've got common ground. You've got common pain, well, you've got common ground. I appreciate those thoughts and concerns, although uh, my, my, my therapy is, is included in a labor and industry trauma and uh, job-related injury that mm -hmm. caused a bunch of chaos and created a bunch of other stuff. Okay. And that's why this anxiety is even coming up. Okay. Uh, and he's the only option in my entire town. Wow. Okay. All right. So, so whether it's so I'm, therapy, I'm losing my brain over here. Okay. So look, whether it's therapy or some sort of a community or, or, or just human contact, because psychologically you're, you're, you're convinced that you're unwanted, unlovable, and all the messaging that your parents put into your head, whether it, it was implicit and or explicit okay and now you're living through the lens of the eyes of your mother primarily and there are a whole bunch of other people out there that don't think that way believe it or not they just don't think about putting people down <clears throat> and, and 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 sending such negative and and destructive um uh, messages out there there are people who don't do that and so I would really like you to find new people, people that, um, that, that, that maybe are in a, already in some kind of a community or uh, something that would feel comfortable for you. And, and especially now that your therapy is ending and just um, know that it's not your fault that you're in isolationism. You just pr protected yourself, and it's been too long since you've been protecting yourself, and now you're, tr you're starting to feel that you're dying on the vine, okay? So protection, <laughs> yeah. the protection has gone a little far. So anyway, do be in touch with me. If we can help order the book for you, we'll do it, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll contact Amazon for you if you can't do it yourself, okay? So, Brooke, be in touch, okay? And, uh, and out of that, start looking to see if you can um, expand beyond your, um, your ism and, and be a little tiny bit, one tiny bit at a time, inclusionary of other people and try it out. And if you don't like them, then try somebody else. I appreciate your time and your concern, and I'm hoping that that can absolutely happen because I also live in a, a very small town where everybody knows my name. Okay. All right. So time so it's to kind of a, time to kind expand. Of like a catch twenty two on every yeah. angle. Okay. Time to expand and just say hello. At least say hello. Okay. All right. All I right. appreciate you. You're, Thank you're you so very much for welcome. your time, Judy. Of course, my pleasure. You take care, Brooke. Okay. All right, you have a good day. Okay, you do the same. Okay, good night. Uh, so are you all beginning to connect the dots that children have to put themselves in that position? They have no choice. And I think we have another call in. So hello, you are on the couch. What is your name, please? Oh, sweet. My name is Charlene. Hi, Charlene. Nice to meet you. Where, where are you calling from? Oceanside. California. Okay. All right. How far are you from um, Sherman Oaks? Um, San Diego. So North County, San Diego. Okay. Not too not, far. Not I too lived terribly. in Long Beach for a while, too, so I know where Sherman Oaks is. Okay. Not too terribly far. Okay. So tell me uh, what is going on in your world and how you relate to the topic of um, it's all your fault. Oh, my gosh. I so relate, and I relate to... Everybody that just <laughs> called in with their comments. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if, if parents aren't taking responsibility, it's just automatically the child's fault. That's a really that's, good that's, point. And, and so let's talk about projection on the part of the parents. You said it well. Parents are not going to own their own stuff very easily. So isn't it easier for a parent to just slough off all their... Um, 
pain and responsibility onto the child and, and put it on their shoulders. A narcissistic parental uh, system is a system gone wrong where the parents put their yeah. own needs before the needs of the child. And so if yeah. they have a need to look good, guess who's going to look bad? Right. Right? Yeah. Okay, so I mean, yeah, that's how I, that's yeah, how I grew up. I mean, uh, to you know, I, I, you can reach back to like just so many different details of of like um when when I was watching the show earlier and mm-hmm. and I was thinking, gosh, I mean, this spreads in so many different areas. I mean, yeah. The fact that the parent doesn't take responsibility, so everything's your fault. But then you go into like little details of, um, like when I was a kid, I got a um, uh, a phone call, like a prank call, but it was a a sexual prank call, mm-hmm. and the guy was super dirty, and I was super embarrassed, mm-hmm. and uh, my mom pried me about what it was, and mm-hmm. to hear all the details about it, and I didn't want to say anything because it was I was embarrassed and really uncomfortable and she made me tell her everything and then it was like well what did you say (laughs) and what did you do and you know I felt like it was my fault so I'm and I knew it wasn't my fault but I just felt like that (laughs) well look look at the leading questions what did he say what did you say what did you do Okay, so where's the part where, honey, I'm so sorry that happened to you. That doesn't belong in your ears. If that ever happens again, then you hang up or put him on the phone with me, and I'll be tracing his number back to the police. Okay, so where is the protection, right? It's almost like... Like, right. like she, she, it's almost like I get the feeling that she was a voyeur of what was going on in that phone call. And, and that's pretty provocative for her to make you want to repeat all those horrible words and embarrassing things. That's that that's abusive in and of itself. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. my mom was very abusive. I had all of the abuses that um, that you talk about. I've very familiar with your show. I watch it every week and really appreciate everything that you're doing. It's just um, amazing work. And, and I hope that, you know, what you're doing spreads and spreads and spreads. And it's funny because uh, just this evening, my son um, is starting therapy. Mm -hmm. We've been through a lot of losses in the last few years and um, we just lost his father um, last year. Oh, I'm so sorry. And, That was an ex-husband, yeah, so, or was it your husband? Yeah, my ex-husband, yeah. Okay. And uh, so in therapy, narcissism came up within, like, the first <laughs> few minutes. And, I, you know, my son and I looked at each other, and, and we both kind of giggled and said, you know, narcissism comes up a lot in my house. You know, I'm constantly talking about it. I'm, I've been learning so much, and I know I've got so much more to learn about, but um, you just really start connecting those dots and making yes. the connections. And yes. and the guy was saying, you know, he's like, I'm 48. He's around my age. And mm-hmm. he was saying something like, uh, well, this is like the end of his, he's doing like his internship, right? And um, and he was saying, you know, in psychology, psychology is changing. Where yes. NPD, he said something like the statistic that they're teaching now is like 25% the population. Wow, I keep reading other older papers, I guess, because they say, oh, 2% or something really low. But I, I, I myself don't experience that at all. And, you know, because of so many people right. who come through the center and also my my team are seeing so many people, the, the number one pain today is human disconnect. And disconnect, you, yeah, yeah, disconnect. And what what comes out of human disconnect is a message of apathy. I don't care. So when your mother right. quizzed you about this phone call, she was loudly and clearly saying, "I don't care about you. I'm curious about the call. What did you say? What did he say?" That in and of itself is an example. Of, of that narcissistic wounding because she's putting her own curiosity before your well-being. Can you see that? She's flipping it. 
She's well, I felt like around. she was implying that I had said something. I felt like that that was an implication, even though I was young to even, you know, really fully understand implications. But that, mm-hmm. that's what I felt like. It was an implication that there was something that I had done to, you know, make this happen for this guy to talk dirty to me. Right, right. And that and that it, too. And You're right. From that point mm-hmm. on, and from that point on, a few years later, I was molested by my neighbor and then raped by the same guy. I mean, this went on for three years, and I couldn't say anything. I knew that if I had told my mom, it would be automatically my fault. And I, I held on to that until I got pregnant with my first wow. child. Wow. Was I mean, this I somebody never in, told the, in, the, in the family? Or was this somebody that, that was a stranger or family member? That, uh, it was my brother's best friend. It was my wow. best friend's brother. I okay. mean, we were all... It was a neighborhood friend. Okay, and so so I, I think that that is connected with the fact that your mother was so callous and so unconcerned and so implying blame. What did you say to that guy that made him talk dirty? Or what, you know, I could, I could hear you anticipating her questions, and they wouldn't have been right. questions about, are you okay? you know, t- l- right. let's go to the police. Let's make sure you're okay. Let's, let's put you into right. therapy right away to uh, uh, deal with your, your PTSD. This was not on top of her list. It would, would not have been on no. the top of her list. So therefore you couldn't say anything. You had to hold that in. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Right. Right. And yeah. so that, that's how we, we now can understand that these childhood wounds that are not healed, they either implode in us or they explode on other people or both. And so we have right. to uh, process the feelings because either way, they're, um, they're going to break us down into chaos and then we're going to defend. And we already know common defense mechanisms like uh, I call it drug, sex, rock and roll, right? So either drinking too much, too much promiscuity, uh, shutting down, uh, cell phone uh, addiction and other forms of addiction. These are all ways of defending and then they create a human disconnect which perpetuates more human disconnect. So it's a vicious uh, uh, cycle. Uh, And I wanted to um, make sure that you have a copy of uh, the PDF of my book, Be the Cause, Healing Human Disconnect. I do. Yeah. I asked for it not too long ago. And um, yeah, I have read a little bit of of the book and I want to finish it and I want to get the video series. Um, I'm just really busy and Every time I go to read it, it's like later at night, and then I fall asleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it's like trying to get to that point of having the free time. Um, there's just a lot going on um, right now. I, I feel like it, it's hard for me to get time for myself. I'm definitely giving a lot of myself out. Yeah, and, and, and um, you'll, you'll learn that once you get the psychological poison out and all of these horrible encodings and all of these self-blame encodings, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll begin to see that there's more room for self-care. There's more room for letting other people in that are nourishing to you. And you don't have to live in this system gone wrong and choose people that demean, devalue, destroy, discard, which, which is the typical way uh, that um, the narcissistic system gone wrong behaves that way uh so i really appreciate you calling in reach out anytime okay and um, yeah i really appreciate um talking with you i really appreciate uh, what you're doing again yeah and thank, uh, you. thank you so much my my pleasure brooke you take care all right thank okay. you good night uh so good night. i good night uh, I, I am very passionate about getting this into the school system. I cannot do it alone. If there are any members of the, uh, the audience out there who are uh, connected to schools, I'd like to run a, um, a, a mind map pilot in that school and teach children to prevent uh, f- from falling into um, negative core beliefs so that we could do some prevention. Uh, the aim is to, to psychoeducate parents so that they don't injure their, their children, to psychoeducate uh, 
um, the, uh, the, the teachers, the administration, so that uh, they too can be part of the solution and prevention. Because what's going to happen is if we don't learn this early on, uh, we're going to have what we're having and more of it. Uh, schools where people are uh, on, on an extreme, in, in extreme cases, they're suiciding or they're homiciding. And how many times do we hear now it's just about weekly that a student uh, killed him or herself or uh, gunned down the school or did some sort of a, a horrendous kind of an acting in or acting out. And I believe very strongly that this is uh, uh, pre uh, this this can be prevented with a lot of psychoeducation, and if we get parents and children to um, to participate in this, then uh, it sure is better than cleaning up the mess on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, so just want to put that out there. I'm also um, wanting to put this system out into the prisons because I think that there are a lot of people who. Um, who, especially if they're about to be released from prisons, they need to, to heal their childhood wounds and they can be studying this material and, um, and learning how not to project their pain onto others and to heal actually while they're incarcerated so that when they come out, if they do come out, then they're not going to be hurting themselves and others. Uh, so I, I really appreciate your um, your calls, all of your calls. I want to go to uh, Shrink That Tune. And the tune tonight, of course, is titled I Blame Myself uh, by Sky Ferreira. Okay, produced by Justin Raisin. Um, I Blame Myself. Is it because you know my name or is it because you saw my face on the cover? Either way, it's all the same. It's like talking to a friend who's trying to be your lover. So somebody's got an agenda with you and they're trying to maybe um, pull you into something that they want from you. Underneath it all, I know it's not your fault that you don't understand I blame myself. So there's this feeling that they're never really going to be understood. And they're, they're used to no empathy, so that, that they, they can't even really reach out there and talk to anybody, so they just blame themselves. How could you know what it feels like to fight the hounds of hell? I'm going to use hell here as a metaphor for the past. You think you know me so well. How could you know what it feels like to be outside yourself? So maybe this person is so isolated that they themselves feel a disconnection from themselves. Maybe they're numbed out or um, in a, a kind of like a depersonalized, derealized state. You think you know me so well. I just want you to realize I blame. I blame myself. Blame, blame, blame myself. I blame myself for my reputation. I'm just a face without a choice. So this, again, is... is a, um, very, very powerless person, maybe in a hostage situation. I trust you'd n never like to guess what I think above these shoulders. Ten years old without a voice. Ten years old, this person already shut down. Underneath it all, I know it's not your fault. Well, back to what we spoke about in today's uh, uh, episode. It's never uh, anybody else's fault but your own because it's too dangerous to see others as... Um, as the enemy. Better, it should be your fault. How could you know what it feels like to fight the hounds of hell? How you think you know me so well, and it just goes on and on with the chorus line of, I blame myself, I blame myself. And so tonight, I hope we connected a few more dots about childhood wounds, which there are five of. There's physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional verbal abuse, neglect and smothering, and all of these abuses re lead to reactions and horrible encodings. And so all of you who called in and all of you who listened, hopefully have a little bit more information about how important it is for that child to hold on to the bond. And by blaming yourself, you think that you're holding on to this bond, but the bond never gives you what you need. 
So um, we do have a beautiful team of people at the Psychological Healing Center. And again, you can order the PDF copy of the book. And please subscribe to our show, and then you can get weekly notifications. And do call in. We do offer a 15-minute free consultation to anyone who would like to have that. So thank you very much, everyone. And um, I will see you next time. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.